Cakers and Bakers. It's Kat from Kat's Cakes. And tonight I'm going to be making this amazing cake topper. And if you have time, hang out with me. Alrighty, so tonight we're going to be picking up where we left off uh, with the last video. If you didn't watch the last video, go back and watch the last one. All right, and then come back and watch this one. Or you can watch them, I guess, independent of each other. But anyway, um, I'm just making the next thing that goes on the cake. And so uh, this topper, you can watch by itself, like I said, or go back and watch it from the beginning where we started with the first topper. But all of them are going on the same cake. So anyway... I'm getting my coffee. If you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you subscribe to my channel and make sure you hit the notification button so you'll be notified every time I post a new video. All right, be right back. Okay, let's get started with basic tools we need to make this little chickadee. Um, so first we need a piece of styrofoam. I usually build all my models on styrofoam. Um, I'm gonna use my Serart. Uh, cat's tongue tool. Um, this tool has a really unique tip. It is smooth and yet um, has like a little bit of texture to it, but it helps you to smooth out any paste or anything that you want to be level and smooth. Um, a water pen and um, I'll use that to just connect things um, in, with the Saracino paste. Water works fine. I have a small rolling pin and a couple of uh, plastic tools. I think I got these out of a Wilson set, but you can buy them from PME as well. Some of them I have on my website. So you can, if you don't have them, you can get them there. Um, also a fractal pin. This is the black one, but um, they come in a variety of colors. And I'll use that to do little detail work like eyelashes, eyebrows, etc. Um, and just another rolling pin to roll out anything else that I want to make a little bit smaller. Uh, my pen knife to cut out anything that uh, I have to cut out that's really small. And this is the Saracino modeling paste. Um, I'm going to use it colored this time. The yellow uh, pasta model is just going to make it a lot easier. I don't have to try to get that particular shade of yellow. Um, it's nice and bright, so I'm going to use that. And I have that on my side as well. So I started by just rolling out a log. Um, and and it's about two inches high. This is going to be the body of the chick. So I just rolled it out. And because it has cocoa butter in the paste, it will hold its shape as I continue to build on it. But um, I just trimmed off the top of the log and um, I'm going to uh, work from there. So now I took a little bit more of that yellow and I rolled it into a ball, kind of an egg shape, oval shape. That's the shape I usually start out with when I'm making a head. And I'm going to take this small rolling pin um, and I'm going to mark it about halfway about the middle of the head. Uh, that's usually the eye line. That's usually where you build eyes at on any model. Um, this one in particular, for sure, it's going to be about center way. Uh, this is a bigger head, and usually when I'm making uh, baby characters or anything that's like childlike or little, um, I'm going to make it a, a oversized head. Um, because just just because it makes it even cuter so anyway i marked it about halfway up um and i'm gonna just kind of smooth that out um and make sure i don't have any sharp edges uh but basically just want to have that indentation right in the center and that's where we're gonna have the eyes at like i said um and the nose will be right under it and this just gives me a general guideline for where I want to lay the rest of the things out on the face, um, usually about halfway. But anyway, um, so I'm going to just try to make it a little bit smoother, uh, rounding out, any, like I said, any sharp edges, smoothing out anything that I don't want um, to have a corner. And 
um, kind of elongating, making sure that I didn't, when I marked it, didn't push anything out of place. So just like I said, just redefining the shape. And I did want it to be a true oval. So, I mean, not oval, but egg shape. Um, kind of ironic that it's for a chick though, right? <laughs> but, um, so I am making it a little narrower towards the bottom and bigger and rounder, fuller at the top. And now I'm going to try to decide where I want to place the eyes at. So I'll just make a little impression, like right about there, and then on the other side in the same general vicinity. Just kind of mark it with my finger, and I can kind of see where I want to put the eyes at. I'm going to make it a little bit deeper. Just press that in so I know this is where my eyes are going to go. And I just use my thumbs or fingers to make these marks and then kind of blend them out. Push in more towards the center. Um, if this was a face, that would be where I was going to place the nose right there in the center. So pushing those two indentations toward the center would kind of create the nose. You can see it kind of has a bridge there. Um, but we're not going to have a nose because it doesn't have a face. We're going to have a beak. So now that I know where I'm going to place the eyes and I've built up kind of a bridge, I'm going to take some orange paste and form the beak. Now, I apologize again. I actually worked off camera a little bit. Um, but basically all I did was roll a cone shape, flatten it out, roll another corn, cone shape, and flatten it out, press the two together, and one on top of the other, and then kind of um, separated them just a little bit, and um, flattened out the top part. Uh, I hate that I did this off camera. I really wanted everybody to be able to see, but unfortunately, uh, when you are working, with the camera overhead, you can't really tell what's in frame and what's not. Um, but I did the best I could, but um, I am gonna continue to work and hopefully you'll be able to see a little bit better once I get it um, glued on. So I'm gonna wet the area with a little water, as always, water uh, with the Saracino paste. Uh, works perfectly to glue things together. So I went right there below the bridge, right below the bridge, and I'm going to attach the two pieces that I flattened out and stuck together. Um, so you can see a little bit better here that those two cone shapes were flattened out, pressed together, and then kind of separated to create a beak. And now I'm pushing it onto the head. And I'm going to play around with it just a little bit. Uh, just trying to get more of a beak shape. Pressing in at that bridge. And I could play with this for hours, y'all. I... I and when when you when you whenever you're making these little models, it just seems like you know they're ne they're never perfect and never end up perfect. But I'll keep playing with it as long as I have to to try to get it ex a close as close to what I'd like as possible. But if you noticed near the bridge, I pinched it a little bit more. Um, you just bring it in more towards that bridge and pinch on that beak um, and that created that that ridge on the beak um, just keep playing with it till you get it how you want it like I said everybody's will be different and um, 
that's kind of sort of the thing with you know making figures uh, your your figure and your style will be yours and um everybody's will come out different even if i remake it it'll come out different but um even if i try to duplicate it it, it, it will come out different but you just keep working until you get it how you want it like i said and and try to be happy with the final product because um you could like i said you could spend hours working on one of these and um if you don't at some point decide that it's okay it's okay to have imperfections every animal is different every person is different um so such is life so now i'm going to add some eyes i have some black pearls just little black beads that um i think will work perfect for this um let me grab a couple that i try, I try to find the size that i want when you buy a, a jar of them they're all going to be different sizes um but here i am playing with the mouth still um but uh, I think the size right here will work out great. I'm going to press one in, see how I like it, and get in there. Push it in. And that looks pretty good. So let's see if I can find another one to match it. Like I said, usually when you have a, a jar of these, uh, they're all different sizes and you're not going to find two perfect ones, but as close to perfectly matching as I can get, try to find two that are about the same size and um, put this other one in, press it in. And again, you can use tweezers for this. I'm just too lazy to grab tweezers, so I'm going to just press them in with my fingers. And I think I've said this in other videos. I, I I think that these figures don't come alive until you put the eyes in, uh, whether that be eyelashes or sleepy eyes or you know, made the balls of their eyes and um, pa or painted them on. I think once they have eyes, it gives them a little life. So um, now sh she has eyes. And here I go playing with the mouth again. Y'all will forgive me. I'm still want it more open a little bit so I'm using my Serart tool to smooth it out just a little bit more open it up just a little bit more um and and make that look as <laughs> close to perfect as possible so I'm just giving it kind of a final once over and I'm probably not going to be done with it even after this um but just kind of stepping back taking a look at the face and seeing if it's how i want it um she does need some eyelashes so i grab my fractal pen and let's see we're gonna put um uh, eyelashes on right on the side on both eyes and the fractal pen is great for these little mini details little fine little fine details the fractal pens work great. Anything that you would use um, like a zero paintbrush for um, and paint on something, you can use these fractal pens for. Um, they are food safe, uh, completely edible, and they come in a range of colors. I do have them on the website, so if you do need some, I have them. The white ones are great for putting like the white in the eyes. Uh, if you um, do a full eye, putting that little splash of white in the corner, um, giving the eye some light, uh, that white pen works great for. Um, and it's a really great white too. Um, sometimes when I try to paint white in, uh, the white will be runny or it won't show up as well on certain colors, but the, what, the fractal white pen works really great for stuff like that. But, um, I don't know if you noticed or not, but uh, when I do eyelashes or do anything with these pens, I can do one side great looking straight on. And then the other side, I have to kind of turn 
the the head to the side or upside down even just to be able to get it to match up with the other side. Um, I can't do both sides straight on for some reason. And I guess it's the same way as like when I put my own makeup on. Like usually I have to hold my eyeliner uh, in one hand um, to do one side and then to do the other the other eye. I have to like switch hands or do it from a weird angle. Um, but I can never do straight on. So it's the same thing. You see, I turned her upside down to do the other eyebrow. Um, and I don't know, maybe other people have a different approach for that. But for me, it just works for me to turn it upside down or turn it to the side or get a different angle. And then I can get the other one to almost match. Um, but anyway, she's got eyelashes now and she's got brows. So it is time to put her um on the body now like i said i did do an oversized head um so um i gotta get something to support the head we can use a toothpick i don't know if the toothpick is going to be enough support um but it's just trial and error so um i'm gonna stick the toothpick in and wet it first Anytime you want something to stick to the Saracino paste, you're going to wet it. And I'm going to insert that into the body and leave enough exposed for the head. Now, I'm thinking that this is such a large head. I don't know that this is going to be enough support. Uh, it may be too thin. But we're going to try it and see. So... Let's see. And I don't think there's enough of it um, exposed. The toothpick is just, I think, too short. But let's see. We'll try it anyway. So anytime you place a head on a body, you want the chin to be forward, the nose to be forward. Um, if you think about your side profile, your chin is not level. Even with your neck, it's always forward. Uh, so... We always want the chin or beak or um, nose to be forward. And that, again, is going to be a lot for that little toothpick to support. So, uh, yeah, I was right about that. So let's take the toothpick out. Um, and we're going to try. I have some skewers. They're a little bit thicker than toothpicks and uh, definitely longer. So I'm going to grab one of those. Give me one second here. And okay, so you can see it's a lot longer. I'm going to go ahead and insert um, a skewer and see if, let's see if that works. Let's see. Yeah, that'll work. So I pushed it all the way down. And let me get my snippers here, my wire cutters. I'm going to just trim off what I don't need, but I need to remember to leave it a little bit longer because the head is so much larger. So let's see. Oh, got to fix my trimmers for some reason. They're a little messed up. I don't know. Anyway, let's see. Right about... Yeah, that should work. So I'm 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 visualizing the head being on there and about high how high it will it will be off the body. And just trying to trim it just a little shorter than what I think the head will be because again, I don't want it to poke out of the top. But let's re wet it <clears throat> or let's wet it. Because we're going to stick paste to something else. And anytime we stick the gum paste to something else, we're going to add some water. And I'm going to try to find that hole initially made with the toothpick in the head. Line it up and just stick that on. And because it's longer... It'll provide more support for the head. So as long as it's pressed down 
it should be fine. And there we go. See, now it's not falling forward. It's not falling over. And it will provide support. Yeah, that looks good. Much better. So I'm looking at it, just looking back at it, I see there's a little bump there, and I think that that is the skewer itself. So I'm going to try to pull it forward a little bit and rub out that little dimple. I think it's going to be fine. But that's one thing you have to watch. That's what I was saying about making sure that when you insert a stick into your... Um, your your head that it's not so long that it comes through the top and you definitely want to make sure that it's forward enough that um it's in the center and not poking through the front um but anyway it's fixed now so i think she's good and we're gonna add some more details to her in, in, in any way um and i will say this if i had painted on her eyelashes and her eyebrows i believe I would have totally royally screwed them up by now. Um, but that's another thing about that fractal, fractal marker. Um, you see that the eyebrows didn't rub off when I was fiddling with the head again. Because uh, I could have easily have been a catastrophe that I would have had to correct. Um, but anyway, I've got some more orange. Um, I'm going to create the feet now. So I just rolled out um, two ovalish balls um more like logs but uh little ovals and i'm gonna use those for the feet so um rolling the second one here and just making sure that there's no cracks and it's pretty smooth and i'm gonna place um make sure they're the same size So I always check things to make sure they're the same size too before, especially like if there's two arms or two feet or two legs or two whatever, um, laying them next to each other now, just sizing them up to make sure that they are exactly the same size. Um, otherwise, you end up taking it back off after you put it on um, and fixing it and then putting it back on. But So I'm going to put a little bit of water on the body and a little bit on the feet themselves so that I'll be able to stick those in place. Again, water, whenever we're joining paste to paste or paste to anything, uh, with the serotonin paste, we're going to use a little bit of water and everything sticks fine. Now you can use piping gel to do this as well. Piping gel works too, um, but it's just easier for me to use my... Uh, water pen or you can use a brush and some water it doesn't matter um i just when i'm working i know that um i'm a little bit clumsy sometimes and i know that if i would have had a glass of water on this table and a brush uh we probably would have had an accident by now that i would have been cleaning up with paper towels and hopefully not uh, I hopefully i wouldn't have ruined the little figurine but anyway, I stick both feet on. I kind of stuck, uh, if you notice, the bottoms in and left the top a little bit loose. So that it looks like the feet are kind of curved out. Um, and I'm angling them just a little bit towards each other. That way, I mean, it gets up. I don't know if you know about Tweety Bird, but uh, it gives it kind of that Tweety Bird look. Big feet, big head, and then the feet being curved out and big. Um, and I need to make an impression in the feet, too. So I'm going to take my blade, let me see, 
and I'm going to stick in the tip of the blade. Kind of right where, let um, see. I want to make two cuts in each one. So I'm going to stick the tip in. And then I'm just going to kind of rock the blade upwards. And that makes the first toe. And then do it again. Insert the tip and then rock it upwards. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other foot. Insert the tip in. And then rock it upwards. Being careful not to cut into the body. But that's another good reason. Another reason why I kind of left the feet um, unattached at the top. Because I didn't want um, to cut into the body. But anyway. Insert the tip of the blade. And then rock it upwards. All right, and so now there's a separation between the little toes. And I'm going to take this um, rolling pin that I have with a little point on the end. And I'm just going to mark in between the toes. Um, it just kind of separates them a little bit more. I'm not pressing it all the way in. I'm just marking the where I stuck the tip of the blade. And now she has tootsies. Okay, she's got her head and her tootsies. She looks awesome. Um, let me see. I think she needs a little swirl of hair, a little bang. So I've just rolled a little um teardrop shape, made it a little bit more pointed, and I'm going to attach it using some water. I've used my dressing tool to put a few ridges in it to make it more hair like or feather-like in this case. And how cute is that? Doesn't that just make her absolutely adorable? It's all about the hair, darling. All about the hair. Okay, so she has, um, now she has this little curly cue. I think she needs a bow too. Um, a bow, a tail, and some wings. I think that's about all we have left to do. So let's get started on that, work on that, get some wings, a tail, and a bow made. So I feel like I'm gonna become the queen of working out of frame. I promise I'll get better at this, guys. I, I just, uh, it's just really hard for me to tell when I'm in frame and when I'm not. So maybe if I mark off my map, but for now, I'm um, sorry. Again, I'm working out of frame. Um, but yeah, um, I just made a longer cone, um, flattened it out with the rolling pin. And then I'm using my Dresden tool to um, put in some lines for feathers. Um, and you end up with something that looks a little bit like that. So you take your teardrop, flatten it out, use the dressing tool, drag the lines in, and you get feathers. And I made two of them. Um, of course, they're uh, from opposite sides of the chick, so um, I made them, uh, the, I drew the lines out on opposite sides of the, the drop, if that makes sense. 
so that they um they match up but um for opposite sides um so i'm just drawing the lines in making sure that i have the grooves all kind of drawn out to the ends to the edges and that gives me my feathers and i think Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so, um, so just play around with them until you get them how you want them. All right, so let's see, left side, right side. Um, I think that looks good. They're about the right size. And I'm going to place the one there, I think. And then the other one on the other side. So let's get the water. Again, anytime you stick gum paste, serrachino paste to serrachino paste or serrachino paste to anything else, just add some water. You don't want it soaking wet, um, but just enough to make it adhere. So I'm going to press that in there on one side. And see how it's holding its shape? Again, that's the cocoa butter in the paste. And this cocoa butter in the serrachino paste helps it to set up faster and sooner. Uh, I don't think I would have had the same results if I had used um, just some fondant. But at any rate, let's put the other side on. And we'll put the other side on. So I am just pressing it in. I think that's a little bit too long. So you see, I'm going to just reshape it. So yeah, I'm always constantly checking for size and, and then placing it. So you can put it on, take it off, put it back on. And then once you finally secure it, then it'll stay on. So just pressing in here and now she can fly look at that she can fly she got two wings i'm just pinching off here making the the ends of her wings just a little bit more curved up making sure they're where i want them and playing around with her just a little bit more but there she is Trying to attach it in as many places as I can. So it's just pushing those shoulders. I guess that's what you would consider that. The shoulders of her wings um, onto the body. And that just gives it a little bit more security. And I think the only thing I have left is the tail and the bow. So let me get my bow mold out. Um, I do have a little mold, a little silicone mold. Um, and I just pressed a little pink, um, serrachino paste into the mold. And now I have a little bow. So let's see where we're going to place it. I think just right here at her little curly cue. Um, so I'll add a little water. And press that little bow in place. I'm trying to figure out where how I want it to sit. I don't think that'll work. So just press it in right there at the center. And make any adjustments that I need to make to make sure that it's sitting how I want it to sit. And there it is. So the only thing left to do is to add a little bit of color. So I grabbed some petal dust. Um, just using a little bit of fuchsia mixed with a little bit of orange. Um, going to dust the edges of her bill. Um, I forgot to put these little holes in. So I'm going to add the little holes in her beak. 
I guess that's like the nose holes. I I don't know what they're really called, but I put one in each on each side. So I'm going to go back to dusting and we're going to get the color where we need to. So uh, like I said, using a little bit of fuchsia mixed with a little orange, I'm going to dust her, uh, her little tootsies now. And I'm mostly focusing on the edge of each one of the feet. Um, any lines or indentations that I created. Um, so like the little cuts between the toes. Um, the edges of her wings. And with these petal dust, a little bit goes a long way. So you don't want to um, add so much color to your brush. I usually will dip the brush in like, like the lid of the color um, instead of into the actual uh, container of color. And, and even then, shake it off a little bit. But yeah, let's get the tip of her beak around the edges of both the top and the bottom. And if you are afraid that you have too much color on your brush, you can always dust it on a paper towel first, just to make sure that you don't have too much. Um, or you can t try to mix a little bit of color with a little bit of cornstarch. Uh, that also will soften it a little bit. But just always try to test it out first. Uh, sometimes I think I don't have that much in there and, and I'll go to dust something and I'll have a whole big blotch of color. And you don't, it's, it's harder to get it off once you put it on there than to add more. So I try to add color in layers anytime I'm dusting something. You know, try to start with a little bit and then put a little bit more and then put a little bit more. Kind of like here, eye makeup, you know, you blend everything. They always tell you blend, blend, and then blend some more. Um, start with a little and then put more. Do it in layers um, instead of just trying to pile a bunch of color on at one time. But like I said, around the edges, uh, any, anything that you want to accent, any lines, any details, any grooves. So definitely uh, around the, the edges of the beak. I'm kind of focusing there. I feel like this little ducky could be a um, an influencer and do her own little makeup tutorial <laughs> because I'm sitting here like putting on blush and um, adding color to her face, um, highlighting, low lighting, etc. So I feel like she could just totally be doing a whole glamour tutorial right now. She's already got her lashes on and her brows done. So now what? I've added blush and lipstick. <laughs> but anyway, uh, just, just add enough dust to emphasize what you want emphasized. And, and, and that'll be enough. And then just kind of step back, take a look at her, make sure she's she's exactly what you want, and if she looks how you want her to look, and if she if she is, if she does, then she's you're all set. Let's see if I can give you a close up. There she is. Oh, cute little ducky. Oh, another one I would love to keep for sure. I'd love to keep this one. 
she came out so cute. A little 360. And there she is. Ready for her close-up and ready to go on to a farm cake with a bunch of her friends. Okay, that's it. Thank you for watching and have a good night.